Hello guys, Andrew from Swift Films, and if you're here, it's probably because you're having a problem like I had a couple weeks ago, where you'll be playing a game or running any kind of demand and program when suddenly your CPU usage will drop, and your FPS will consequently drop, or if you're rendering a video, it might even crash, or it, it'll render weird in that spot, or the render will slow down, and I just could not figure it out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys an image of what I'm talking about. If you've had something like this... Um, where like I was playing a game and all of a sudden like it would just drop like as you can see and I knew that it wasn't like a my CPU was faulty or anything because like it looked like it was doing it on purpose because it like it was a pretty flat line it formed um, with like the you like the usage that had dropped so I was like alright whatever it's doing it's doing it on purpose so something's gotta be wrong but it's not that the CPU is faulty so I was able to narrow that out um, basically what is going on at least this is what I was having this is the problem I was having, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to diagnose it so that you don't, like, fix it without needing to fix it. Anyway, um, my motherboard was not powerful enough to power my CPU, because the 8350 is a beast, not only with performance, but with the power usage it takes. And not any motherboard can, like, handle that. Um, so basically, the motherboard was trying to keep up with the power that the CPU used, and it was heating up consequently, but... Motherboards aren't necessarily meant to heat up because, you know, they don't have a fan. And a lot of them do have heat sinks, and that's one of the things that solved my problem currently. But they don't have a fan, so they, like, they heat up. And basically what it was doing is the motherboard was getting so hot that it was like, all right, we have to stop for a second. So it would cut its usage. The CPU would cut its usage so that the motherboard could, like, cool off. And that's what was going on. So the way to figure out if this is your problem is you're going to want to download AMD Overdrive if you're on AMD or the Intel equivalent. I know they have something. I do not know what it's called. You'll just have to Google it if you have an Intel processor. Um, that's kind of all I could tell you there. Anyway, you're going to go ahead and open this. AMD Overdrive will go ahead and open up. And you're also going to want to download CPU ID uh, hardware monitor. Now the two of these are going to let you know if is indeed your temperature that is the problem. Now I'm not going to launch the test because I don't know what it's going to do to my recording because um, you'll see. Anyway, so currently uh, we have this temperature. That, now this would normally not be that high. Just ignore that. Normally it would be um, like in the 20s probably, but I was just playing a game. And even then this is not that bad for idle. But what you want to look at is I believe it's I can't remember. I think it was the CPU temperature right here. Now this mine on this motherboard is broken, so you know that is a problem. Uh, like the, not the motherboard itself, but the temperature reader. So it's like stuck at this. But I know I'm not having the problem anymore because it doesn't drop when I play games. Basically, this will normally work. It's always at one. Uh, it's always at 51. But you'll see whatever uh, temperature this is. Um, and normally it's going to be very low when you're not like doing anything demanding. But what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and do stability test. And you're going to check all of these. And then you're going to move this down to like maybe three minutes. And you're going to click start. And basically what that does is AMD Overdrive is going to clock your CPU up all the way and run at 100% usage. And it'll basically force your CPU to cut like you'll figure out the problem because it'll heat it up really quick. So you don't have to like play a game to figure out. It's a lot more efficient. And if you see this this temperature, like th these are the motherboard temperatures, if you see these get really, really high and then drop w at the same time the CPU usage drops, that's the problem you're having. Now, you might be thinking, well, all right, you've told me I have a problem. I get that. I already kind of knew that. How do I fix it? So basically, I'll show you guys what I used to have. Now, I used, I'm going to go to Micro Center just because it's my local hardware store. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to show you guys some examples. So I had the Asus... Hold on, that's not a good start. Uh, motherboard. Okay, so I had. Let's see if I can find it. Just so I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so I had this one. Now that the basically I didn't know this. I'm pretty good with computers, but you know you learn something every time. Um, this motherboard has a four plus one, I believe, VRM configuration, which means it has like. I don't. I don't know exactly what they're called, but four like parts are um, responsible for powering the motherboard or for powering the CPU and one part I believe is p responsible for the other motherboard parts like the RAM um, and with that it's just not enough it could be the other way around I don't it doesn't necessarily matter and if you're like you know a lot more about computers than me 
you know, I mean, you can just ignore the fact. Just just know that a motherboard that has a 4 plus 1 power uh, configuration is not enough to power an 8350. Uh, the one I ended up getting, and it has worked seamlessly for me so far, and I haven't had any more drops, is the ASRock 970-something. Um, so if I were going to recommend one, if you are having this problem, I would get this one. Uh, it's not that much for me. If you have a Micro Center, they have a fantastic deal. If you buy a CPU, you get $40 off a motherboard. Anyway, that's beyond the point. Um, I would get this one or another one that you can find that is an 8 plus 1 or 8 plus 2 power configuration. Those are what, from what I read on some forums and uh, like for what actually worked for me, I believe this one's an 8 plus 1 power configuration. I don't know if it says. Yeah, 8 plus 2 power phase design. Uh, so that is, I can't remember, it's either 2 to the CPU and 8 to everything else, but I'm pretty sure it would. it's 8 parts to the CPU and then 2 to everything else, which assures that your motherboard is not going to heat up and have all kinds of problems when you're under load. Anyway, guys, I hope you I fixed your problem. Um, hopefully you can still return your motherboard. You can, like, I, I just said that mine wasn't working properly because it was not clearly marked. And actually, if you go back uh, to that one I just showed you guys, it doesn't say anywhere that is 4 plus 1, and it says it is compatible with 8350, which it technically is, but not really, and that's kind of deceiving. And since they don't even tell you it's 4 plus 1, the only way I figured that out is digging through some forums and finding other people's experiences. Anyway, guys, I hope I made a uh, very like concise tutorial that you were able to uh, figure out. If you have an Intel, obviously this one's not going to work, but you'll have to find one that has a more powerful power design. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I fixed your problem and ended your headache. Peace out.